Hello there, Floss Tube. This is Lunar of Lunar Witch Stitchery. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, this is Almond. <laughs> um, he is insisting on being here, and he's a little bit playful, so if you see him biting me, it is fine. He is being gentle. Um, but yeah, I wanted to bring you guys a Stitch With Me video today. Um, this is the best setup I could come up with today. Um, let me adjust this angle down a little. That is somewhat better. Um, <laughs> but yes, um, I don't have a lot of time to film stuff right now because of the holiday season, so um, I thought that I may as well try to film at least something. <laughs> and uh, this is my normal stitching time anyway, so yeah, I thought that I would get it on film. Well, not film, but you know. Um, I also thought that this would be a good opportunity to do a couple tag videos, or tags, I guess, that I've been kind of wanting to do. Um, if you're not familiar, tags are pretty much just like a set of questions um, to answer. I am getting them pulled up right now. I am going to be doing two tags. One of them is the get to know your stitcher tag, which is um, pretty basic. And then the other one, I don't know if it has a name. Um, but I'll link the video that I got it from. Um, it has just a few other stitchy questions that are a little bit more, like, interesting and non-traditional. Um, so yes, I will be doing that today. Before we get into it, um, I am stitching today on um, Princess Serenity. This is by Make It Pink. The original art is by Hannah Alexander. Um, yeah, this has been my main piece lately uh, since I uh, caught up on my Dark Queen, um, which is, you know, slight spoiler for my next floss tube, but, um, you know, that's fine. It's going to be kind of a while until I can um, sit down and get one of those filmed anyway. So, but yes, anyway, I am just doing some basic background fill in today. Um, this part right here. Um, the background on this is done in two-stranded half-stitch in a Krynik Silk Mori. Um, I am loving stitching with it. It feels so smooth. <laughs> so um, this is something super easy that I can just turn my brain off and do. Um, so I thought that it would be decent for a stitch with me um, since my other cat just jumped off. Um, since I don't have to focus so much on it. So, let's get started. Oh yes, I forgot a couple other disclaimers. One, if there's any uh, camera movement or distractingness, I'm sorry, I have three cats and they rule the house, so... <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes they get wound up like Almond just started sitting up. Uh, there he goes. So, um, the other thing is I do have upstairs neighbors and they can be pretty loud sometimes, um, just with like voices and footsteps. So if you hear any of that, I'm really sorry. Um, but it is what it is and I cannot do anything about that. This is my cat Flannery. Um, he seems to want to sit on my lap, which is not um, a great spot for him right now. <laughs> okay, so let's get going on the tags. Um, the, I'm going to start off with the get to know your stitcher tag just because it is um, a little bit more basic. So the first question on that tag is how did you get into cross stitching? Um, I think I've mentioned this several times on this channel, but um, my mom actually taught me how to cross stitch. I'm not like entirely sure where she learned stitching from or where she picked it up from, but um, she's been doing it for like long before I was born, so... <laughs> Um, she's been doing it for quite a while, and I picked up, when I was like 10, I picked up this little, like, baby ornament-sized uh, dimensions kit. It's like this little cat with a yarn ball, <laughs> um, and I stitched that up as my first piece, and uh, I just really fell in love with it after that. Um, I kind of gave up on it. Well, not gave up on it, but I kind of just didn't do it for a few years. I didn't really know about like modern cross stitching. Um, but there was a 
Pokemon YouTuber that I used to watch back in like 2011 or 2012-ish. And uh, she did Pokemon cross stitch magnets um, of like some of her favorite Pokemon and stuff. And I thought that was a super cool idea. So at that point I picked it back up um, when I was, I would have been a teenager then. Um, and yeah, I've just kind of been going ever since. <laughs> Um, my mom doesn't stitch anymore, so I am the only, like, active stitcher in the family. Um, and then I got my, uh, fiancé into it as well. Uh, he's made a couple appearances on this channel, so, um, yeah. <laughs> my cat is off playing right now. Uh, question number two, how long have you been stitching? Like I said, I've been stitching since I was 10 and I'm currently 24, so I have been stitching for almost 15 years. Uh, my birthday is in April, so um, I'll be turning 25 in just a couple months. Um, and again, like I said, I did take a little bit of like time away from stitching um, for a couple years there from like age like 12 to 14 or something. Um, and I certainly didn't stitch as much as I do now for some of those years, but um, yeah, just to make it simpler, it's been 15 almost years since I started. Question, <laughs> question number three, what is your favorite cross stitch you've done? Um, I have done a lot of really little cross stitches, so it's kind of hard to pick one because I've just done so many. Um, I don't think I have a picture of this, but um, I had a commission like many years ago for a friend of the Bulbasaur evolution line from Pokemon, and I really liked how those ones came out. Um, and then I also have a little like uh, stitch from a Pokemon game. Um, I can definitely get a picture of this one and put it in. It says, bless this wretched hive of scum and villainy. Um, it is from Pokemon Sun and Moon. It is in the uh, evil team's like base kind of thing. They literally have this cross stitch hanging on the wall and I just thought it was so funny. Um, so I stitched that for myself in college. I think I was like in my first year, so I would have been like 18. Um, but yeah, that one I really like. I keep it out in my living room. <laughs> um, let me mark off these stitches. Um, Question four, what is a stitching tool or technique that you have not tried yet? I, there's a couple. Um, I have not done parking. I think I've kind of talked on this, spoken on this before, but um, I am like a little nervous about parking. I just feel like it's not for me. Um, I don't know. I just like, I just... I just feel like it's it would be really easy for me to kind of lose track of all my stuff. Um, I know some people really swear by it and some people um, really, really rely on it for full coverage pieces. And I feel like I should give it a try just to see if I like it. Um, but I am just so... <laughs> uh, Cross-country stitching is so ingrained in my like style that I don't know if I really like need to switch. I don't really have any issues with doing cross country. Um, so I don't know. I am a little bit hesitant on that. And the other thing is I haven't tried thread conditioner. Um, I am so sorry. My cat is losing his mind right now. <laughs> um, you might be able to see him running by occasionally. So yeah. Anyway, um, Yes, so I I don't know if I have talked about this on this channel. Um, I actually went to college for apparel design for a while. Um, I wanted to uh, do costuming for theater. Um, but I ended up not liking it. So I switched majors, but even though I did not like the apparel design major, I ended up working as a seamstress in the costume shop um, at my university. And that I really, really liked. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what hole I'm supposed to be going in. Okay, there we go. Um, and when I worked there, um, we used um, pre-waxed thread 
and thread and embroidery floss are different to like use obviously um thread is a lot thinner a lot more brittle and it's just used for like different stuff whereas embroidery floss is a little bit smoother and thicker and stronger um just because you use like multiple strands of it at once but anyway i have used waxed thread and it is awesome i love it so much um i just haven't really done it for stitching because um, one, I haven't really found that much of a need for it. I feel like I stitch just fine without it, so I don't want to go out of my way to, like, buy extra stuff. And two, I'm also concerned about, um, if it would alter the color of the floss over time. Um, if I did use thread conditioner, I would probably be using beeswax. Um, I don't think I would want to do anything that has any weird chemicals or stuff in it just because I don't really know how that's going to last over time but I know beeswax is like a historical thing that people used to use many 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 years ago as a thread conditioner so I at least know that it wouldn't degrade the thread I just don't I don't know and with stuff like this like I, I don't really need to condition this silk because it is so smooth on its own but um I worry that for nice floss like this that it would take away some of the like sparkle or sheen that it has. Um, so I don't know. Those are just a couple things that I have not tried. I'm sure there's like a million other things I haven't done too, but those are just the first ones that come to mind. Um, question number five, what are your cross stitch goals? Um, I'm actually planning on making a separate video about that since we are headed into the new year. Um, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> that will be a regular sit down floss tube video at some point. I'm not sure exactly when I'll get around to that, but, um, yeah, as like a general, uh, <laughs> like a little taste of that. Um, Serenity that I am stitching on right now, I would love to finish next year. Um, she, I'm actually considering her like my, my other focus piece besides my Dark Queen of the Earth. Um, I just really like her and <laughs> I have so many of these Sailor Scouts that I want to do and I really want to keep up with them. So, um... Yeah, I'm really aiming to get her done next year. I think it would be really cool to get her done sometime in the spring, but I'm not really gonna like force myself to do that because I wanna enjoy my stitching instead of like uh, forcing myself to work on stuff when I don't feel like it. So that is a loose goal of mine. And uh, I'm also going to, I am going to for sure be finishing my Dark Queen of the Earth next year. Um, that has been my main focus piece um, since September of this year, 2022, um, and I am caught up on that sale, so the plan is to continue being caught up, <laughs> um, and so if I do uh, meet that goal, I will be finished with her um, by August of 2023, so that is super cool. Um, other than that, I don't really have any, like, super strong goals. Um, I think, besides Serenity, I think it would be really awesome to finish Odile next year as well. Um, she's my other Make It Pink design that is currently on the go. Um, I kind of spoke about this in my last floss too, but I have some, like, weird emotional ties <laughs> to that piece. Um, I just, like was really struggling with it when I first started because it was my first time stitching on linen and all this other stuff. So, um, yeah, I she's kind of put to the side at the moment, but I would really like to finish her. She is fully kitted up and everything, so I have all of her beads and um, all of that stuff. I just need to put aside some of my feelings about her and, uh, you know, just pick her up and give her some love. I have some full coverage pieces as well, but um, we are not going to go into that in this video um, because I'm not totally sure on that yet. <laughs> the next question, question number six, what is your favorite fabric and needle? 
Um, I use a size 26 tapestry needle. Um, I didn't used to use tapestry needles actually. Um, and I used to use like these really, really big needles that were like way too big um, for cross stitching, but I didn't really understand why needle size was important. And back then too, I was stitching on plastic canvas um, for those Pokemon magnets I was talking about. And you don't really need to worry about like blowing the holes open or anything on that because it's plastic. So you really can't uh, ruin it in that way. Um, <laughs> so I didn't really get into um, tapestry needles until last year when I started falling down the floss tube rabbit hole and I found all these other stitchers online and I just learned a lot more about stitching. Um, I have been stitching for a very long time, like I said, but I have learned so much about cross stitch in the past year. Um, and I'm really thankful for that. It's been really, really cool. <laughs> um, but yes, that is my favorite needle size. Um, my favorite fabric, I have settled on um, 32 count linen over two. I'm currently stitching on a 36, um, if you were wondering. Uh, oh, if you're wondering about this fabric, this is Aphrodite from Under the Sea Fabrics um, in 36 count, like I said. Uh, sorry, I'm marking my stitches off over here. Anyway, um, but yeah, my Dark Queen of the Earth is on 32 count, and I love it. My stitches look so, so good on that fabric. It feels really good to stitch on. And it's a good balance between like that, um, the like niceness of having smaller stitches and the ease of stitching on something bigger. Um, so yeah, does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is my favorite. Question seven, what has been your most challenging cross stitch? Absolutely my Odile piece. <laughs> Um, and I'm sure that this one, Miss Serenity, will present a challenge to me as well. Um, I'm not sure if you guys, sorry about the lighting, if you guys can see up in her hand and wrist, there is an awful lot of holes up there, and that is because this piece has over 5,000 beads in it. Um, so there's just a lot of fractional stitches and um, stuff like that, and I have never done pieces quite this complicated before, or I hadn't until recently-ish. So like I said earlier, Odile was my first taste of one of those, and I really struggled. Um, I had never stitched on linen, I had never stitched over two, and I had never done fractional stitches in that amount. Um, I've definitely done fractionals before, but not like so many of them. <laughs> Um, and not on such a high count fabric where they are just absolutely tiny. Um, so that piece was really challenging. Um, I am just over 7% on that piece, so I have a long ways to go on it. Um, but like I said, I think if I were to go back to it now um, with my current skill set, I think I would have a lot easier of a time. But yeah, she has been very, very challenging for me. Number eight, who is your favorite artist? Absolutely love Make It Pink. I talk about her in every single video. <laughs> I just think that she is so awesome. She puts so much time and energy and love into all of the um, charts that she makes. Um, and even though they aren't original designs, like, um, like I said, this art is originally by an artist named Han Hannah Alexander. Um, you know, Ashley from Make It Pink still puts so much effort into making sure that these cross stitches are going to look amazing. Um, she said earlier that she isn't familiar with Sailor Moon at all, and she put so much time and energy into all of these Sailor Moon pieces, and I just really admire that about her. If we are talking about designers who design their own art from scratch, I think my favorite is the witchy stitcher. Um, I don't know. I just think it's really cool to have like um, an alt, another alt person 
<laughs> who's in the stitchy community. It makes me really happy that I can find stuff that pertains to my interests um, as a another alternative um, goth person. It is hard sometimes to find that in the stitchy community. So um, I just really appreciate the work that she does and uh, I do really like her art style as well. It's really, really cute. And number nine, who's your favorite floss tube creator? Um, I don't think I have like one favorite, but the people who I watch every single floss tube um, of theirs, I do Jessie Marie Does Stuff, Rachel Ray, and Cross Stitching Smiles. Um, they're like my main three that I am obsessed with. I watch all of their videos uh, no matter what. They are just awesome. Um, but I do watch quite a lot of floss tubers, so... <laughs> Um, again, it's hard to say who's my favorite and, you know, some people don't upload consistently and, uh, stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, those are my main three and that is everything for the get to know your, uh, stitcher tag. So onto the other one, <laughs> the one with some more interesting questions. Um, again, I don't, I don't remember what this tag is called, so I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Question one for this tag. Uh, give me a break. At some point, many of us has, have lost our stitchy bug. What is the longest break you've taken from stitching? I don't know exactly how long it was, but like I said earlier, I did take a super long break, um, between age, like, 11 or 12 up until I was, like, 14 or 15, um, and stitching wasn't my main hobby during my teenage years either, um, so it's kind of hard to say, um, but I think cross stitch has been my main hobby for almost two years, um, and I haven't really taken any breaks during that time, so, uh, yeah, uh, many years during my <laughs> teen years is my answer for that. Number two, location, location, location. Where is the strangest place you have stitched? Um, I, <laughs> so this is kind of a side story. Um, I, my main hobby before this was cosplay, um, which is basically costuming for like pop culture characters. Um, and when I was in high school, one of my close friends and I were doing some uh, Vocaloid cosplays. I'm not, I'm sure most of you guys won't know what that is. Uh, it doesn't really matter. All that you need to know is that one of the characters had um, her, the bottom of her outfit was very skimpy. <laughs> and it was basically like a bikini bottom. Um, they, it looked like underwear. <laughs> and um, on the, front part there was some embroidery and my friend who was making this cosplay didn't really know how to do hand embroidery so she asked me to do it so I did <laughs> um, but when I was in high school I was super busy obviously um, I I had a lot going on so I ended up taking her costume underwear into study hall with me <laughs> and I embroidered her underwear underwear while I was sitting in study hall at like 8.30 in the morning. Um, the high school I went to did something called the block system. So our classes, we only had four a day, but they were an hour and a half long. Um, so I actually did all of that embroidery in one sitting since I had an hour and a half to sit down and focus on it. But um, I don't know, I always get kind of a laugh out of that. I just think it's really funny that I had... <laughs> the balls to sit and stitch panties in the middle of my high school study hall class. Um, but yeah, otherwise I usually just like to stitch at home, um, especially with like cross stitch because it takes a little bit more concentration. Uh, embroidery, well that embroidery was just back stitch um, and it was uh, one color and I just had it like marked out on the piece already so I just had to follow the lines so it was very easy to to do while I was in study hall. Number three, bad habit, 
Bad habits are hard to break. What is your worst stitching habit? Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell from how I have my camera and stuff set up right now. Um, I have really awful posture while I stitch. I am like all hunched up, all curled up. And uh, I just like want to be as comfortable as possible <laughs> while I'm stitching. And it is not good for my back. It hurts my back. <laughs> a lot <laughs> um but i just like like being comfortable so much that it kind of is worth it to me almost which is so awful um i think i might do better once i end up getting a lowry which i am planning to do at some point within the next couple months um but yeah that is a very bad habit is uh sitting like a little curled up shrimp Number four, save the trees. So many patterns are available as PDFs nowadays. Which do you prefer, paper or PDF? Um, if you folks have been around my channel for any amount of time, you might be aware that I, um, up until very recently, I was solidly on the paper pattern train. Um, I did not like using PDFs. I had um, issues with Pattern Keeper. I just like couldn't get any of my stuff to import correctly and I just like I had had it with Pattern Keeper. I was done trying with it. I I didn't think it was that helpful. Um, and stitching off of like just a regular ass PDF on like Adobe Acrobat is not my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> I uh, eventually um, started using Pattern Keeper for real once I got my first Heaven and Earth designs. And after I had like a little bit better of an introduction to using PDFs on Pattern Keeper, I fully love them and <laughs> I'm never going back to paper uh, unless I have to. Um, I know like some, some patterns out there are only available as paper and that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely fucking love PDFs, <laughs> especially for stuff like this. Um, this piece is just so complicated and there's so many fractionals and um, backstitching. Uh, I actually use Cross Stitch Saga for this, um, which does support backstitching. And there's a feature on it where you can turn off like everything except for the color that you're working on. So right now I have that turned on and the only thing that I can see um, on my phone screen is this symbol. Um, and if I turn it on, you can see all the backstitching. Or if I turn it off, I mean. So backstitching, no backstitching. And that just makes it a lot easier for me to see, like, <laughs> what the actual fuck is going on. Um, because, <laughs> yeah, with pieces like this one, there's so much backstitching, it can be kind of hard to tell, like, what is supposed to be under the back stitching. I don't know if that's just me, but anyway, basically that was a really long winded way of saying I used to be fully on team paper pattern, um, but now I like PDFs. I think that they are awesome. Number five, to frog or not to frog? That is the question. Even the best of us are prone to the occasional oops. Do you tear it out or work around it? Um, it kind of depends on what the oops is and if I can find it. Um, if it's something, like if I right now found that I fucked up something in this area, I would leave it. <laughs> there's no way. Like there's just so much happening here and I did that so long ago and it's right in the middle of this area and like it's pretty much already done. So I would just leave it as is. But if it's something where I am currently working with the strand and I realize that I skipped a stitch or something earlier in my line that I'm working in, I will absolutely frog it out and go back and fix it. Um, yeah, it's, if it's not too much effort, I will, I will frog and start again. Um, but if it's, if it's like a lot <laughs> to go back and fix it, then I will just leave it. My third cat is making an appearance as well. Um, this is Cashew. I think that adjusted the focus to him. Um, he has been sleeping in his little bed this whole time and he just got up, so 
Yes. On to the next question. Oh, I think he's going to come lay with me. Um, number six, don't lick a gift horse in the mouth. The stitchers know how much time, energy, and love go into our craft. Have you ever made something for someone and regretted it? Uh, yes. <laughs> I When I was in high school, um, my friends wanted to do a gift exchange, and I... Um, just did not have any money. Uh, I did not work during high school. I only worked during my summer vacations, so I had absolutely no money. Um, and this was a little bit after I started doing the Pokemon cross-stitch stuff, so I was kind of aware that you could do a lot of cool things with cross-stitch, and I was like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just go ahead and stitch something for everybody. Um, that's like a really cool personal gift, you know, everybody kind of gets something that is meaningful to them in some way, and it's handmade. Um, <laughs> so I made, um, they are probably like, I don't know, a few inches high. They weren't like huge, they were, you know, ornament sized-ish uh, stitches for my friends, and um, the first one I finished was the only one I finished on time. It was for a girl that I am no longer friends with, and um, I gave it to her, and she, like, didn't understand what the point of it was. <laughs> it was a cross-stitch of uh, Gigi the cat from Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, which is a movie that she was super into, and she also really liked cats. And I was like, oh, like, I made this for you. Um, it's not, like, fully finished into a thing because I wasn't sure how you would want to display it. You know, you could frame it or you could finish it into a little pillow or something. And she was just, like, so ungrateful and really didn't understand, like, the amount of time and energy that I put into making it for her. And after that, I kind of stopped giving cross stitches as gifts. Um, just because of, like, the amount of time that goes into it and people that don't stitch don't really understand, um, how labor-intensive this craft is. Um, so yeah, I don't really do that anymore unless I'm sure that the person, uh, would be, like, into it. <laughs> um, yeah, fun stuff. The next question, number seven. Oops, I did, a, did it again. You suddenly realize your needle has gone missing. What do you do? Um, first, I freak out because I have three cats and needles are super dangerous for them. Uh, they can die if they ingest one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if I can't find it, first thing I do is check my couch and check the table next to me, uh, check the floor in the immediate area. And if I still can't find it, I might pull out, like, my needle minder or a magnet and kind of swipe it around. Um, I will not stop looking for a needle until I find it because, like I said, I do have three cats and I would be absolutely gutted if something happened to them because of my own negligence. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thankfully that has not happened. Uh, knock on wood. I am pretty good about keeping track of my needles, um, which is really, really helpful. <laughs> um, yeah. Question number eight, be kind to yourself. If you could go back in time and give stitching advice to your younger self, what would it be? Um, I would probably tell myself that even though not everybody understands like why you like this art form, um, you should still keep doing it. Um, even if people, like, tease you about it, <laughs> it's totally fine. It does not matter, because when you're older and you have good friends in your life who are supportive and actually like you for you as a person, um, they will think it's really cool. So, yeah. Um, like I said, I, I did have some friends in high school who just really didn't understand cross-stitch or why I was into it. Um... Which is funny to me because we were all like super artsy. Um, all of us did costuming and sewing and all that kind of stuff. So you would expect them to be into it, but they really weren't. Um, so 
yeah, I don't know. I guess that kind of like just ties into messages I would give to my younger self in general. <laughs> if it had to be like stitchy advice in particular, um, I guess it would be to try out different kinds of fabric and stuff. Um, I didn't really know that like stitching on linen and other fabrics was a thing until I was an adult. Uh, I only stitched on Ada or plastic canvas. Um, and I think that if I had started stitching on other fabrics earlier on, I would have had a much easier time now, uh, cause I would have had a lot more practice with that. Number nine, forget about it. Have you ever abandoned a project? Why or why not? Yes. <laughs> um, like I was saying with that gift exchange thing in high school, I had some projects going for other people in that friend group and I ended up just abandoning most of them. Um, just because of like how that one girl received hers, I like wasn't really willing to put in the effort to finish everybody else's with like how shitty she made me feel over it. So, um, yeah, but other than that, I technically have one project that I abandoned, um, but I kind of, like, restarted it. Um, I have wanted to do my own, like, Pokemon sprite cross-stitch of all the Kanto Pokemon for a really long time, and I started one and realized that not all the sprites were the same size, <laughs> which I didn't really realize when I started. So the spacing was all messed up and uh, I just kind of abandoned it. But I actually ended up buying a pattern from somebody on Etsy of what I, exactly what I was looking for. So um, yeah, it was kind of like a restart situation with that. Um, number 10, this is the last question. Trends come and go. Which trends slash fads are you glad or sad are gone? Or are there any you hope will return? Um, I, so I really haven't been up with like the stitching community for very long. Um, I didn't really realize that there were so many stitchers online until like December of 2021. <laughs> so, um, I don't really know like what fads have been around. Um, I am currently stitching um, a pattern from the 90s and people said that like a big trend in the 90s was having a lot of back stitching in your pieces and I do really like that. Um, I think a lot of people really moan and groan about back stitching but it does add like a lot to your piece. Um, so I think it would be cool to see more designers incorporating it. I know a lot of them do um, but it just is like so much in some of these older pieces. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just think it would be really cool to see that. Um, but yeah, I don't really know if that many other <laughs> uh, stitchy trends. Um, oh, except for like thread conditioner. I think for a while people were really obsessed with thread magic or thread heaven. Is that what it's called? Um, but I think I saw some people saying that it's actually really bad. Oh, fuck, my needle came unthreaded. Um, it's actually really bad for your floss. I'm not sure if that's true. But anyway... Um, perfect timing because my camera is about to overheat and I just finished this tag. So we will wrap this video up here. Thank you all so much for being here and uh, I hope you have a good holiday season and I'll see you next time. Bye! I almost forgot to show you but this is where I was able to get to in the stitching session. Um, I did like 150 or 200 stitches so not too shabby. Okay cool, see you guys next time. Bye!